Welcome to Crushing with Abby O. I'm your host and body optimization coach, Abby O'Sullivan. I am passionate about helping you navigate your health and self-love journey, and I'll be sharing all of the secrets on utilizing nutrition, movement, stress management, mindset, and more in order to help you fit self-care into any moment of your day. We are going to bust through the health and fitness industry bullshit. We're going to have a laugh and we might even cry sometimes, but then we're going to crush our day. Thank you for tuning in. I'm so excited to have you here. Let's go. Hey, 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 welcome back to another episode of Crushing with Abio. Today I am joined by special guest Allison Reeves, who is a business coach, and we're going to chat about the nervous system, nervous system regulation, and somatic therapy, and how this changed her business, her income, and her life. I love talking about this. I love learning from her. She has a really amazing way of breaking things down so that they're really understandable and so that you can apply them to your own life. So I'm so excited for you to get in on this conversation, especially if you have heard me talk about it or if you've heard of it elsewhere, somatic therapy, nervous system regulation, and how this can benefit your life. Even though she is a business coach and does help entrepreneurs, Nervous system regulation, somatic therapy does not only benefit those in the entrepreneurial space. It is for all of us. So stay tuned to see how you can use these tools in your own life. A little bit more about Allison. She's been blogging since 2011 and business coaching since 2017. Allison helps online entrepreneurs monetize their expertise and tap into hidden profits with a blend of both practical and heart-centered approaches. I can attest to this. I have attended several of her um, online workshops. Allison managed marketing teams for several multi-million dollar companies before becoming a business coach and has since helped thousands of entrepreneurs worldwide grow their visibility and their income through coaching and courses. Her business is to help entrepreneurs make more money, but her mission is to help people love their lives. Everybody welcome Allison Reeves to the podcast. Welcome, Allison. Welcome to the podcast. It's so amazing to have you here. Thanks so much for coming on to chat with us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. So we're going to jump right in. Um, We're going to talk about nervous system regulation, somatics, and energetics as it relates to building a business. And why I love these topics is it's not just about for your business. This is, I mean, personal development is required as a business owner. It's just, it's like the prerequisite is that you must agree (laughs) to constant, to just like continually learn and grow. And I know that learning about these topics has really enhanced my own life too. And you can apply it to so many different areas of your life. Um, So what I would love to know first is Like, I know you've gone from a blogger to an online business coach, and I would love to know a little bit about that, like a snapshot of how you got from where you are from then to where you are today. Yeah. Yeah. So I kind of started online and just like what you said about like self-care, somebody said this a long time ago, Taylor Welch from Traffic and Funnels. He said, as your business grows, your self-care needs to grow. And I feel like more often than not, people almost operate the opposite way (laughs) or like their business grows and they just want to work more and more. And so that has been like, just to echo what you were saying, it is just so critical. Uh, But I started a personal blog in 2011 to sell paintings and to talk about my music, which if you are watching this on video, you see how a bunch of guitars behind me, those are not just decoration. Um, and it worked. So like, I didn't know that much about blogging. I didn't know anything about SEO, but I was able to just use that blog as half-assed as I was <laughs> to share about my music, sell paintings, book gigs. And at the time I was working for a college where I was working for three vice presidents and my major was in leadership. I didn't have any experience in marketing, but because I started that blog and because I was working for these three departments, they asked me to start a blog for the college and a YouTube channel for the college. And that kind of propelled my whole career where I pretty much immediately went from blogger in 2011 to marketer. And then in 2012, changed, well, 2013, got a job as a full-time marketing coordinator for a local service-based company. Um, 
And then I worked for that service company for a while, helped them go from, you know, hundred real estate deals a year to over 200 real estate deals a year, just using blogging SEO. And then we did a lot of event marketing too. And then in 2015 or 2016, I got a full-time job as a marketing manager for a web-based service company. And so I already knew SEO, I already knew online marketing, and I already knew like the local marketing, but then turning all, all that into a really sophisticated like online membership basically is what they had not going into a rabbit hole. Um, I helped them double their year, double their business in a year just by leveraging Facebook ads. Um, and so that's where I got a lot of my like sophisticated knowledge as far as like rapidly building websites, growing memberships with Facebook advertising and all that kind of stuff. And then in 2017, I just, I had helped so many people become millionaires and grow their business. And I was still underpaid for the work that I was doing. And I was like, I'm going to start my own thing. I had the blog, but I wasn't painting anymore. So I didn't, it wasn't until 2018 where I learned how to make money just online passively with, uh, with my blog. After I stopped, stopped painting, I was like, well, now what do I do? Wow. So I started coaching in 2017 and then so on and so forth. I could keep going, but that's how I got <laughs> here. Roughly how I got here. That's so cool. So much on the job experience. I mean, I highly admire like your, uh, your knowledge in all of that, like copy, writing, uh, marketing. I'm like, oh, she's amazing. <laughs> so are you. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so whenever you, so I know like in my own personal journey, and I know a little bit about your story, that's, I feel like we can re relate. We have some similar similarities in our stories, especially yeah. with like mentorships and just growing our businesses. So I know like when we talk about nervous system regulation, that feels like it's a, it can be kind of a broad topic and it may feel very unfamiliar to um, some listeners. Like I know I've talked about it a little bit. Um, so I know what it's meant for my personal journey, but I would love to know like when, as you moved into the online space as your own person, your own entity, growing your own business, when was like a time or some moments where you were like, wow, this, this work is it like this shit is legit. Like I need this. This is really helping me. I maybe I, it's something that I've been ignoring for a while and like being introduced to it has like opened my eyes so much and it could be nervous system regulation. Maybe it was somatics or energetics or like they, they layer obviously, but I would love to know that for you. Yeah. And our, our parallel journey kind of starts when I started like learning about nervous system work. So I, I thought that even, I thought mindset work was bullshit until, until like 2019. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mindset this mindset that. And then in 2019, I joined a mastermind where they, they just taught it differently. They taught it in a way I resonated. I really needed it at the time. And so that learning about mindset and really giving that value and like having a life vision and going through like visualizing my day every day like that didn't start to really change my life until 2019 and that massively propelled my career from what i've been doing to what i started doing then and it helped my clients too like even though i have a, had a blog coaching program and had a program for coaches to start their businesses and i had a this and i had a that the mindset work that that i taught after going through that transformation was like the thing that most people had testimonials about. Mm -hmm. um, and then in, then I kind of burned out um, and I discovered, I met an, a new coach and I had gone through in 2021, I went through what I think was like a real depression, which I never experienced that level of depression before. And, um, and I kind of bottomed out and I had, I had a few months where I just like could not pick myself up again. Um, and towards the end of 2021, 2021, that's where I started just, I started learning about somatics a little bit and it started just the, the people who were teaching it to me, didn't teach it in that much depth. But I just, when I learned about somatic work, which was my first entry into nervous system regulation. So I, I just remembered that these coaches told me to do, um, breath work, like intensive breath work, which I'd never done before. And during my very first 11 minute breath work exercise, I was watching Wim Hof on YouTube <laughs> yeah, and it was like, I could not believe how 
intense it was, I just felt it in my whole body. And that was the beginning of me being, of me knowing like, oh my gosh, this is what I've been missing. This is why I could never, because my whole, my whole business and career, whether I was making a crap ton of money or having a rough time, my anxiety around money was constant. And so I started, that's when I was like, okay, it's not just about making money. Like there's something else going on here. I cannot get out of this anxiety. Uh, And that the key to that was like nervous system regulation and somatic work. Um, The reason for that at just a high level is like, uh, I made as high as a $60,000 a month, but I'd never regulated my nervous system. And so when like you, we all have a window of tolerance of like what's comfortable for us and what is a little bit uncomfortable for us. And when you hear coaches online talking about like being edgy, a lot of times they're talking about edging closer to that yeah. window of tolerance. We're like, yeah. it's, we want to challenge ourselves and get into that discomfort without going outside of your window of tolerance, which can dysregulate your nervous system. Which so when super something's... easy to have happen. Oh, so easy. Uh, I feel like uh, maybe in a, in a, in a brick and mortar and probably just based on my own experience, because mine were smaller and they weren't such big, like, you know, I wasn't like renting the whole place just for myself. It was just like little rooms, but online space, hundred percent. I have felt like I was in probably a dysregulated state for the majority of the time I've been trying to do this. And it finally dawned on me this year, like how much was just going on in my life. That was like, wow, like you're, yeah, you're challenging yourself. Good. Like work harder. Like you got, like, you're not work. You're not after it unless you're like pushing yourself beyond your limits. And it's like, actually, I think, I think there was maybe a step or five that I missed there. <laughs> well, and the problem, like the biggest problem with that is like, it actually works. Like pushing yourself and your business beyond your window of tolerance mm-hmm. will get you results. And so mm-hmm. some people never learn a better way. They just always feel insane or burned out or like things are really hard. Yeah. But I think like what prob- what probably happened to you, I know what happened for me is I got to a point where like, I cannot force it anymore. I literally cannot like physically, emotionally, mentally. I was like, I, I was still making really good money, but I was so close to just like throwing in the towel mm-hmm. because I was just so like, I was like, I cannot do this anymore. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the, but that's the problem is people tell you like push, keep challenging yourself, keep going, keep going, and all of that is true, and it works until it doesn't. <laughs> yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, and whenever I think about like, especially when you started talking about breath work, um, and feeling that in your body, and then tying it into, for me, what connects me deeper to all of this is being connected to my body. Like if we are running in that state where we're dysregulated or we're just like hustle, hustle, go, go, go all the time, and you're never really taking any chance to be quiet, check in with yourself or even see how you're feeling in your, or like just address how you're feeling in your body. Because most of us know when we don't feel right, when we're really tired, when we're really anxious, when we're just like feeling stressed, but we tend to ignore it a lot to just keep doing because it's sort of what we're told. And we're also told that like you, I don't know, like emotions are weak or you're being lazy if you need rest. And we all, we also know that that's like not true, but that's a whole thing that you have to fight in your own head. Um, but even just recently I had this little epiphany about just being and being able to be in tune with your body and sensations in your body to bring things to life, to bring that energy to life, to bring the like the energy that you need for your business to life without just all the the doing like the being in it like you can't just do without having that energy behind it to love it i you know what i'll let you kind of bring some energetics into the conversation because i feel like i'm gonna go down like a weird little... we're going there we're there. yeah <laughs> we're i'm like there. and i'm probably not I'm like am i explaining this like the way that i want to but it was just something that happened to me recently in a meditation where i was like wow i really felt that this time and, and I, as a health coach, getting in your body with like mobility or working out, feeling the muscle, the mind to muscle connection, like the mind to body connection is so important. And I think that is also important in business because it is such a fucking roller coaster. Yeah. And when you get tapped out and you're completely dysregulated, we've got to bring it back. So you can, I'll let you expand on that. 
Yeah. Yeah. So like, you know, it works until it doesn't pushing works until it doesn't. And then you burn out and then you don't have a choice. Um, when you were talking just now about like this epiphany that you recently had, it reminded me, which ties in perfectly to energetics. I feel like regulating my nervous system and doing the somatic work is what finally helped me to start manifesting in my business instead of just forcing results. Cause I heard about, I feel like, you know, going back to everything I hear about law of attraction, like I, I've never, I haven't heard to date somebody teach law of attraction, except for my spiritual coach in a way that's trauma informed. <laughs> like even just recently, I was like, cause I like to Google, like, you know, manifesting routine and like, just see what other people are doing. I just watched it. This video has a million views. I'm sure this influencer on YouTube is very successful and her approach is not trauma informed. And what I mean by that is it's the whole thing is like stay in a positive mindset. If you start getting into a negative mindset, you're not going to be able to manifest. <clears throat> and so in, in law of attraction and energetics, we're often like threatened, like you have to feel good or else. Mm -hmm. um, whereas being like feeling all of our emotions and being tapped into our body doesn't mean low vibe. Like those things can exist. Like we can be sad and stressed. And we can also still be high vibe and manifesting. I feel like I'm about to go on 10 tangents because I'm like, we I need to talk about what somatics is or, but that was like learning how to regulate my nervous there. system. <laughs> yeah. So, and just knowing like part of regulating my nervous system too, was there's so many times in business, especially online business where like, you don't always know, you can't predict the future. You can do your best to like build for consistency. And that's what I've been working really hard on is not just like these big income months, but I want long-term stability. Like I don't want to have to worry about my income in March and it's January right now. I just want to know that I'm safe and supported. And when I know that I'm safe and supported financially, it's easier to regulate my nervous system. Mm -hmm. And when my nervous system is regulated, it's easy finally to lean back and start receiving and manifesting instead of just forcing. So I'm going to pause there because I feel like I'm about to go off and see where you want to go from there. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, I've been thinking about that a lot too, uh, because I have had that, um, I've burned out so many times in my life, like it just comes in different forms or from different reasons and taking it back to being connected to the body. And then this ties into somatics too, is when you're able to be a little bit more connected to yourself and you're not just trying to do all of the things. Um, when you can create some space to recharge, to um, listen to yourself and listen to your intuition. And when you can do that work to tap into those feelings. So I'll, I'll actually let me stop there and let you explain what somatics is, because that is not something that I have heard of beyond like uh, one and a half years ago. So it's it was super new to me. The business coaches I would I was with would have been like that's woo like I'm pretty sure they would like energetics any of that not into it they were not in they were they probably were but just wouldn't admit it um but that's not anything that I was being taught at the time and it just learning all of that really changed like me <laughs> in a lot of ways so I would love just the explanation of somatics from you yeah. So, so like the word somatic that has soma in it, which refers to the body. And so the word somatics overall can mean a bunch of different things. <clears throat> like you'll hear people doing somatic coaching and movement training. Um, and I think when we're talking about somatic coaching, we're talking about when I'm talking about somatic coaching, I'm talking about using emotions to feel physical sensations, to get to the root cause of stuck energy in the nervous system. So, and that's like when we talk about getting to your, you know, your window of tolerance or getting edgy or like trauma happens. We've mentioned the word, I've mentioned the word trauma earlier, but trauma doesn't have to be, it's not always a big deal. There's little T trauma and there's big T trauma. There's big T trauma, like abuse. And there's little T trauma, like a fender bender or a stressful doctor's appointment or somebody jumping out from behind a door and scaring you thinking it's funny, <laughs> but like yeah. those things can cause trauma. So anytime something happens faster than you can absorb it, like faster than you're ready for, you can have trauma. And so that's why if you have like a really big income month and you haven't been preparing your nervous system or slowing down or feeling your feelings, 
you can have little t trauma <laughs> from mm-hmm. something happening too fast too soon that you can't process um and so when we talk about the soma and that's what we're talking about is getting into like t- tapping into emotions to feel a physical sensation to find trapped energy in the nervous system which is basically like another way of saying this is like i feel like the outworking of this is we get to the root cause of mindset issues mm-hmm. it's like it's like and you don't have to know the story or how it started like a lot of somatic coaching sessions are like oh i remember when i was seven or but none you don't have to have any memories at all you just have to trust the physical sensations and then use breath sound or movement to release that stuck energy mm-hmm. and so what do you find as as a as a result for people what do you find happens either immediately and or long term or longer term yeah so the two biggest results are samantha skelly who founded pause which is where i got my certification from she said and i'll i just love this so much in order to feel better you have to be a better feeler and so i feel like the people who are teaching manifesting and law of attraction they're they're often doing this but they don't know how to teach this Mm -hmm. because they're already good at visualizing and they're already good at feeling but a lot of us who stuff feelings which is like pretty norm norm in our culture like a lot of us stuff feelings (laughs) yeah um we have a hard time yeah we have a hard time manifesting or like or even finding alignment in our businesses because we can't feel effectively Mm-hmm. So that's like the first thing is like when you learn how to feel and you can feel better, you learn how to feel all the feelings, good and bad, you get clarity faster, you can feel more confident, you can expand your window of tolerance because you can tune into what's edgy, like, and breath work is edgy. You, you can just strengthen your nervous system by doing breath work every day. So that's the first result is like just feeling better. And then the next result that I see most consistently with my clients is like getting out of these long-term cycles. So like I had one client who <clears throat> I have, I mean, I won't say her name, but I have permission to share her story. So I love giving this example um, where every day, like she, she's a morning person, but she had to work at night because she had a newborn and schedules and things. So she hated working at night. She was always tired. She could often get interrupted. So she found herself dreading going to work. So she needed to be creative and clear but she was taking like two hours to just be able to get in the zone. Oh yeah. Well. <laughs> and so like, it was really stressful. Cause it's like, I'm, I'm getting up at like four o'clock in the morning and I'm like you know, going to bed at like 12 or one. Oh, wow. And it's just this like cycle because she couldn't get into the zone of work. So we did a somatic session and we started in the coaching session by like feeling into what felt stressful and then feeling that emotion all the way that led us to a physical sensation in the body. And then we feel that all the way. We go to the next sensation and so on and so forth. We get to the root cause of what that stressor was. And we figure out what what she really needed at that age, at that time. We figure out ways to meet that need today. And she's never had that anxiety again. And that was like six months ago. Wow, that's so so cool. I know. And that happens over and over again. We're like, um, if you just trust your body and like release that energy, a lot of times these things that we've been trying to think our way out of can just be gone. Like, oh, I don't even feel like I have to talk about this anymore. It's just gone. Um, and that happened for me with my like anxiety cyclone that led me into the depression I had in 2021, like somatic work and nervous system work. Like I never, ever feel that way, which is crazy to me because I, I literally remember worrying about money for the first time when I was seven years old. Wow. And I don't, I don't worry about it the same way now. Um, huge blessing. It's such a testament to um, coming from the health angle is how the body holds on to stress and how it really can manifest into other things in your body if you do not stop and address what's going on. And this is just another tool that you can use for like feeling better, feeling better in your business, feeling better in your body, feeling better in your life. Like when I talk about self-care, I always say like, it's not just one thing. It's, it's multifaceted. There's so many ways to have like radical, deep self-care for yourself. And it, if you're an entrepreneur or not, like this is, this is very important. Um, I think, and it doesn't have to take hours or years or whatever. It can be, you know, a simple five minute breath work session. It can be a simple like somatic session or just five minutes of peace to do a body scan and 
I, I realized like doing that work, bringing like what I know about like mind body connection in, in stress care really is what I think a lot of this is because we're very stressed out people. (laughs) There's a lot, there's a lot coming at us all the time. Um, is the more that I can stop ignoring and stop shoving down and stop blocking those feelings and like the sooner, well, and I don't want to say this in like a way that bypasses stuff because everyone's journey is different. So please don't like, it's a bit of a generalization. So kind of speaking from personal experience, if I can address that, then I can move forward faster Oh, rather yeah. than just letting true. it like, like circle and spin and like build and build and like, you know, then you're like, I have a heartburn or like, why do I feel neck pain all the time? And it's because you're holding on to this shit that you need to release. And it could be something deep. It could be something that you just need to like admit to yourself, like what you feel about it or have a conversation with somebody or let something go, you know, Um, or make a move, whatever, like just get over your thing and make the move, which is hard sometimes. But in the times that I've had in my life where my self-trust and like my intuition were foggy, self-trust was lacking. And so sort of ignored my intuition because I didn't trust myself. Like that's what this brings together for me too. And I think that in a lot of the decisions that I've made, you know, I can see sometimes where I was like, I was kind of ignoring like what was going on internally. And I mean, it is what it is. Like you like learn the lessons, (laughs) Uh, but it's just, it highlights that to me for me personally. And I think for a lot of people, especially navigating this is um, it's great to have support. It's great to have advice and to have people on your side, but being able to also tap into yourself and like hear yourself. And we've got to create some, some space for that, whether that means clearing old stuff out or just like clearing space in your schedule. (laughs) Yeah, both. It's both. It's like, it's like the, Mm -hmm. the practical and the spiritual always. It's like Mm -hmm. the spiritual side of like, I have to clear it out. And the practical side of like, I need actually time to clear it out. Mm -hmm. Um, You said something that I wanted to speak to the, I mean, the, the somatic work is, it's not, it is relevant to everyone and regulating your nervous system. It's not just about like business and making money. That's always the context I talk in, but Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm learning to expand that more and more because because when you have a regulated nervous system, it does help you make more money and manifest more easily. But it also just helps you to like enjoy your life more. Yeah, relationships, yeah. like <laughs> yeah. not getting not getting so pissed at like everything. You just it, even if something happens, it's like you you don't have to stay in that all day. You're able to like maintain or come back to your own what people say personal power, but just come back to yourself. Like come back yeah. to the baseline. Come back to like normal well I guess that's relative term it's relative term. <laughs> but, but like setting where you like are in your journey like <laughs> setting boundaries figuring out what you want like I had a client who was going through a separation and it's like she'd spent so long being somebody else for other people that like we had to clear some of that out in order for her to be happy doing her own thing and coaching yourself through this can be really simple I find that meeting with a coach like I I still work with a somatic coach because I I can coach myself through some of this, but it takes a lot of self accountability to do that deep of work. And so having somebody guide me through it, who can witness me and like help me when I get stuck. But and for anyone listening, like the, the start of really just tuning into yourself somatically is like when you have a trigger. So like, it could be around money. It could be around a relationship. It could be around like seeing a picture of yourself that you don't like, <laughs> whatever it is, like stop when that trigger happens, stop pause and feel it all the way, you know, instead of, I think what, what's helped me stay in that anxiety cyclone was I was afraid of not having money or losing everything or whatever. And, but I was afraid that if I felt that all the way, I would be manifesting more of that. Mm-hmm. So then I was just getting more and more of that fear kind of like stuck in my body. Yes, that's what they I, say. It's, yeah. it's, I've felt, I have been afraid of that same thing. I'm like, gosh, if I feel negative feelings, I'm just going to manifest more of that. Yeah. I mean, if I were to stay like, yeah, I'm just going to feel bad and more bad and more bad. But it's like they it's like they were saying, like, you can never feel bad. Yeah. So the (laughs) next step is like, what is the trigger? (laughs) And then feel the feel the feeling all the way. 
go into like, if this happens, like let it be, let it feel terrible. And then find that physical sensation in your body. So like for me, I get a lot of like jaw, like my jaw is always speaking to me about what's stressful or your hip or your stomach, or where do you feel that feeling in your body? And you may not feel anything at first, but just like practicing this, like the trigger comes up. What is the emotion? What is the physical sensation? And then without judgment, ask yourself this question, like without, without thinking about it, if you're thinking more than five seconds, you're thinking too much. But when you tap into the physical sensation, just ask, what do you need? And that is like short, super simple process on somatically coaching yourself. It's like, feel the trigger, find the sensation. What do I need? Or what do you need? Mm -hmm. um, and it just like, it's so, it's so much more powerful than just like, I'm just going to throw an affirmation at this and hope for the best. Mm -hmm. Yes. I love that. I feel like that's the basis of like what I try to teach people is like, it's, it's really about like getting clear and finding out what maybe you do want but what you also need and just like really listening to yourself and giving yourself permission to do that too yeah and that could be a hug it could be like i it's usually as a health coach i'm like it could be lunch it could be a nap it could be you know just to acknowledge those feelings yeah or to say you know like something kind to yourself or i mean really it could be anything but yeah. Um, especially when I think like the example of like seeing the picture of yourself that you don't like, I know plenty of women who say that. Yes. So it's, yes, I love that. I would love to know, like kind of personally for you, if you want to share, what would this, is that basically what that looks like for you on a daily basis? Like as you're working through things, do you feel like you're doing this often or what would that look like? Um, maybe an example from, from your life. Yeah. So on a day-to-day -day basis, I, I work on, like I journal every day and then I get into gratitude every morning. And then I think about what I'm trying to manifest and I physically practice like feeling that in my body. Um, and then like, I have a whole process for that. I just did a, a training in my free Facebook group on the manifesting, which I won't go into that, but I do that process every morning. So I'm like feeling somatically the thing that I want every day. Um, because when I had a 60K month, which was like, it was a big jump from where I was at that time, I totally sabotaged it. I mean, I, I did get that $60,000 at some point, but I like, I messed it up through admin errors and it took me like three months to get all that money. Wow, um, yeah. <laughs> um, and so today, like the somatic work on a daily basis is is just that. I usually don't go through that process unless I'm having like a big trigger. So like if I'm trying to manifest in the morning, and I'm just feeling constriction instead of trying to force my way through the meditation. I'll just think like this happened last week where I don't know why I can't identify a big thing that happened that made this this way, but I just like, I couldn't get into gratitude. So I didn't write a gratitude, gratitude list that morning. And I just like let myself cry and kind of feel shitty that morning. Mm -hmm. And then the next day I was over it. Yeah. Um, but then like an example, I remember my husband and I had gotten in a fight about something and it was like, we have, I am thinking any relationship, you kind of have like these ongoing annoyances that every now and then blow up. Mm -hmm. So we, we don't always agree. We don't, we're not always on, we foster animals and we're not always on the same page about that. Like actually I would, <laughs> as much as I love animals, I'd be okay never fostering again. Whereas it's something that he really enjoys. And so I want to support him, but having a guest animal in your house can introduce a lot of chaos, which I have a low tolerance for. So, <laughs> and so we were having an argument around this and I was not feeling heard. And I was just really angry because I felt like he'd crossed a boundary that we agreed to together. And then there was a lot of misunderstandings around it. Um, so I went on a walk and I was just really upset. I was angry and I was crying and I went, I rem that was the first time I was like, Oh, I need to like, maybe I can find this in my body. Like it never occurred to me to do that. I'd always just work with coaches before. Like I never, even though I was a somatic coach, I'd never coached myself in that way. And so I went through the process of like, okay, like what am I feeling? What is the physical sensation? And I can't actually even remember what the, like when I went to like what I needed, I can't remember what that was. But one thing that might be helpful for people listening and even for you is like, when you're asking yourself what you need, like we don't always know, like, do I need a snack or do I need it to this or do I need mm -hmm. it to that? But a really yeah. good basis, if you don't know, like what you might need, if you just Google like inner child needs list, 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cuz a lot of the needs come down to like it is like a snack, but it could it's like reassurance, safety, yeah. support, to be seen, to be heard, to be yeah. acknowledged, to be recognized. Mm-hmm. And so like when I like <laughs> And when I was in Colorado on the spiritual retreat and on the, they post like the photos of the event every day. And I saw a photo of myself where I did not look like I thought I looked like, and I was like triggered <laughs> and like looking at that photo, like feel my feelings, be sad about the fact that I don't look the way I thought I would look. And like, what do I need? I need to be reassured mm-hmm. that I'm okay and I'm accepted mm-hmm. or like, <clears throat> so that's like, yeah, that was an example of, <laughs> and you can probably take that back to childhood Allison to that. Yes, <laughs> like, yeah. yes. Because I go back, oh my gosh, one of my most, it was a, it was dramatic and it was very big. Like I would say breakthrough last year was after I announced that I was closing my lash business. There was a lot going on within that next week. I felt really good. I was very excited. I was like, holy shit, like big moves. Like, wow, this is a big deal. Like it was all good. And about a week later, I hit this like, I I literally just couldn't get off my bed. I was crying, crying my eyes out. I was so sad. I was so deep in that hole like that I was, you know, you sometimes think you're never going to get like you're just in despair. And somewhere in there, um, and I'd been working with a coach who had talked about all this stuff with me. We've I'd gone through, you know, Lauren, I'd gone through her program, too. And so I think maybe that helped me um, get to this point where I saw little Abby and like a a challenge that she had as a kid and how it it directly related to what I was feeling in that present moment. I was like, wow, oh my God. Like, like, I mean, it almost makes me emotional just thinking about it because it was so, um, I don't know. It was just so like, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. It was very like clear. And then when I finally was able to tell her about it because I also felt, which is another, we could probably go down another tangent on this one, but I also felt like a little bit of um, shame for Mm -hmm. having that huge dramatic moment where I was like, I don't know if I can do this online thing. Like, I'm afraid, like, blah, 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 you know, and not wanting to admit that I'd had this whole like half a day where I was in despair and like crying when I should be like high vibing and I should be confident and I should just be like going for it and I've got all that, blah, 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 blah. But boy, when I told her, she was like, oh, my God, we're going to jump into that. She's like, you know, inner child is my jam. Like, let's let's do a somatic session around this. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, was, it was really cool to have that support. It was really cool to have that awareness and to and to make that connection. And I would say that this work has just opened up more of those little points for me to be able to connect to little Abby like more and then to be able to. I guess, resolve that, you know, as an adult. So now I can take, now I can take care of me, you know? Yeah. That is such a beautiful thing. I like when I first started doing somatic work and for, for a lot of my life, I can remember, I know that I'm the one who needs to meet my needs. Right. Like, so even in like dating relationships, it's like, I get my, if I get my needs met first, then they can be met in a more full way and beautiful way in a relationship. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that sucks. Yeah. (laughs) Like I hated that so much. And so I got through that in the relationship side. Like I had a relationship coach for many years as well in my twenties. And I worked through that and was able to manifest my husband before I knew anything about manifesting. Um, and then getting to that in the money side, I just wanted, I wanted a rescuer like so desperately. It's like, if I could have fixed this, I would have fixed it. Somebody come and save me. And I just felt this like desperate heartbrokenness around it especially like when I was at the bottom of the depression, I just want someone to come and fix it and save me. And there's, there's no one coming to fix it. But the beautiful thing about connecting with little Allison through the somatic work is I, I'm excited about meeting my own needs now. It doesn't feel like this hopelessness. Like I trust in my higher self and I see like adult Allison and little Allison and it's so much more empowering yeah. to have those needs met. And I went through that financially too. It's like, I have to stop putting my trust in masterminds or coaches, or I have to be the source of it all. And then everything else is like icing on top. And that, and that was a painful process, but I had a moment, I did a somatic session last week that where I was the client and just showed me how far I've come, mm-hmm. uh, where I was like, I saw little Allison and we were dealing with um, 
we're dealing with a trigger around business and I was like, oh, I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm there for her. And I'm just like, so grateful for that. Like wow. she needs support and I'm like available for I that, that where I wasn't a year ago. Yeah. That's so beautiful. It was so cool. <laughs> we really like people say this and it might sound um, like trivial, but you really do have the power. We just have to, we just have to be open to it and like figure out how we do have that, you know, and just become aware of it. Yeah. It's and so that's cool. like when with the nervous system stuff, it's like we get stuck because we never feel it fully and we have all this like stuck energy. Um, and it all sounds woo, but there is emerging science around the nervous system work. Like uh, trauma wasn't really studied that heavily until like the 80s. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like a lot of the work that we're doing today is like, and the 80s is pretty, that's pretty new stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you think about the fact that you have all this energy that could be stuck in your nervous system from being like seven years old, you're kind of living as like, I'm like living as seven year old Allison and Allison today, like all at the same time. So no wonder it's messy. Yeah. Whereas if I can clearly separate, like this is old stuff, or maybe it's not seven year old Allison. Maybe it's like, it could be from generations ago. Like mm -hmm. there's a, there's work around that showing that like we can carry generational trauma in our bodies too mm -hmm. so you have the experiences you have the stuck energy of your own experiences and stuck energy possibly of past generations uh, yeah. and when we can start separating those then of course you can trust your higher self because you can see yourself more clearly than you could before yes and i mean and we're working with the very primitive nervous system so like <laughs> it has its very specific functions <laughs> Which is a whole another thing. Um, and I know you have to go, but um, do you feel like this is the way of, the, I feel like this is the way of the future with coaching. What do you think? I feel like it really, more people need to get on board. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> That's I the think way to like, put it nicely, but <laughs> people need to get on board. <laughs> well, the fact, I think the fact that our stories have parallels is no coincidence because I mm -hmm. bet people listening are going to relate a lot. Like, 2020 like we all have trauma from 2020 collectively <laughs> like yeah. in the world not just like yeah not just in our state or in our country but like mm -hmm. as as a collective and then i think a lot of people went through that same kind of like bottoming and burning out in 2021 we're like what is life now like yeah. it's different it's like, the, it's like the long come down after the stress and adrenaline like <sighs> yeah craziness. long and, and then 2022 was like all right, what do we freaking do with all that information? I can't believe 2022 is over. It's just Dude, crazy. I know, like, uh -huh. wow. <laughs> but like the, the way of the future for coaches is there's more and more coaches that are realizing they need to be trauma-informed to be responsible coaches. Because a lot mm -hmm. of coaches, and I, I, have, I have traumatized clients by pushing them outside of their window of tolerance. And then they trusted me and I pushed them into these boxes that they may or may not have fit in. I had multiple clients who were massive success stories who after working with me, had to take a break for several months. Mm -hmm. And after that happened multiple times, I was like, hmm. you know, there is a common denominator here and it's not them, <laughs> <laughs> not them. And like, I was so happy and proud of them for being so, so successful. That's all people cared about. And I got claims from that. It's like, there has to be a better way mm -hmm. besides just like burning out and having to take a break. There has to be a better way to business yeah. and to life. Um, and and that know. way is, nervous system regulation yeah and if you know better then you can choose to do better so yeah or you can choose to not be a dick but whatever <laughs> <laughs> just whatever you want you do you do. well please thank you so much number one for coming on and talking about all of this like I could talk about it all day long I love it I love listening to you talk about it you're you're so good at breaking things down in a way that I feel like is really understandable and relatable um, yes. I mean, I, I, obviously I attend a lot of your free training, so I would love for you to share where people can connect with you, um, further. Yeah. So everything is Allison Reeves Co. If you just search my name, you'll be able to find me on Instagram, whatever. Um, I have a Facebook group called the Mindful Marketing Mavens, where I do a lot of stuff. And then on my website, you can, I do monthly live workshops. So it's AllisonRaves.co slash workshop. And the newest workshop will always be at that link, or you can just go to my site and find it. That's the best way to connect with me. But I do trainings on, I'm, I mostly work with service providers and content creators, but I think as you guys have heard, it's relevant to anyone who just wants to have a more joyful life. I think that's just kind of a summary of what we talked about. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much for your time today. And yeah, I can't wait to get this episode out for everyone. And I just appreciate you. Yeah, thank you for having me. 
Thank you for tuning in to Crushing with Avio. If you enjoyed today's episode, please share it with a friend and leave a five-star review. As always, you can connect with me on Instagram at Coach Abio or drop me an email at hello at crushingpodcast.com.